So we just finished a problem where we got some information about the properties of the parabola and then created an equation. Let's do the opposite direction question. So I'll give you a parabola and I want to know all the information about it. And this one is not going to have the vertex at the origin. So I want to graph and the vertex, focus, and directrix. So how do we know that this is not going to have vertex at the origin? So let's run back up to the chart that we made. And there's no way, I'm just looking at the equation column, there's no way I have one of these two because there's basically three terms in it, not just two. So I can't have one of these two. The other two choices are these. So let's look back at our equation and then decide which of these two do we actually have. So it's a little tricky to see, but the y is the squared term, not the x. So there's no x squared here. So let's look at the equations. It should narrow it down to exactly one. The y is squared. So we're supposed to have this right here. So I'm going to rewrite that down below. And then we'll do our best to turn into that form. So that form was y minus a squared equals 4ax minus h. And again, I will give you that chart on your cheat sheet, so you won't have to memorize the chart. All right, what do I have to do algebraically to get this equation into the form I want? One of the things is get the x out to the other side, so that's pretty easy. So here's our goal. I'll put that in a bubble. How do I make y appear only once? What algebraic technique can I use? Y so it would be y minus 2 or y plus 2. What am I doing? I'll complete the square. So we're completing the square on the y's. So I can already tell k is negative 2. Looks like it should be positive 2, but it's always negative what it looks like. I'm not quite ready to say what h is yet. I have to move this minus 2 squared to the other side. So we got 4x plus 4. So I can definitely factor a 4 out. Is this the correct form? Yes, it is. So you can see h and k pretty easily. Just make sure you write the signs, pay attention to the signs. They both look positive, but that means they're actually both negative. So h is over by x. That's negative 1. K is next to y, which is negative 2. What part of the graph does this correspond to? It's a vertex, the focus. This is the vertex. It's our vertex, yeah. So we got minus 1, minus 2. And what is A? It's definitely not 0. A is 1. It's the invisible 1 right there. All right, so with this written down, I'm going to scroll back to the chart, and then you can finish off writing the uh, focus directrix and then graph it out. So 
I'll make sure you got this written down, and I'll go back to the chart. We're in the Y squared row. So the row you want is at the very bottom of the board right there. So you should be able to get, you now have H, K, and A. So you can pretty easily write down the directrix, the focus, and then graph it out. So do that right now. So there's our parabola graphed out. Any questions on the uh, focus or the directrix? Once you know A, H, and K, you're pretty much in the clear, as long as you have that chart. All right, the last problem we're going to do is going to be a word problem. So we'll start with the description, and we're going to build a satellite dish so we can talk to aliens. So a satellite dish is shaped like <clears throat> it's a paraboloid of revolution. Obviously, it's not an infinite paraboloid. That would be very expensive to make. So it is a part of a parabola. And then all you do is think about the axis of symmetry and rotate around the axis of symmetry. So you get a bowl-shaped uh, satellite dish. It is eight feet wide and four feet deep. Uh, and that's the diameter. And four feet deep. 
you can choose where the vertex is. It's supposed to be pointing up, so that means our focus is going to be above the vertex, so it's opening up. So I want to know the equation of this. Uh, well, first let's graph it out. Then find the equation. Focus, vertex, and directrix. All right, so let's graph this out. It's supposed to be eight feet wide and four feet deep. Where's the easiest place to put the vertex? Given all the problems we've done so far. Zero, zero. zero, zero. So it's got the easiest equation if we just put the vertex at zero, zero. So we're putting the satellite dish wherever we want, so we might as well just put it in the easiest spot. So we'll put the vertex at zero, zero. And eight feet wide, we need to be careful. It doesn't mean go over eight feet. That means across the whole dish is eight. So we're going to go over four in each direction and then it's four feet deep so we're going to go up four and those points right there will be the top two points on that satellite dish and then we'll connect it with a parabola so this parabola is not going on forever it's only right here So we're going to write down some points we have, 0, 0, 4, 4, negative 4, 4. <coughs> so I'm about to scroll back to that chart so we can decide which of the two that we are, w which row we're using. And this is opening up, and the vertex is at 0, 0. So this is one of the first two rows the more easy rows and it's opening up so it'll narrow it down very quickly so we got opening up we are using row 2 so we have row 2 going on and we're specifically we're opening up so that means A is going to be positive so you know the I think probably the easiest thing will be take the equation and figure out what A needs to be. You have another point. You have the point zero, 0, of course, but you also have 4, 4, and negative 4, 4. So use that equation, plug in the point, and figure out A, and that should give you every other piece of information that you need. So start with that equation. And I'll give you two minutes to finish this problem off.
All right, so any questions on the focus, vertex, or directrix? As long as you know A is 1, you got your chart, you're pretty much OK. Uh, we can check real fast on our point up here. It's a little tricky to tell right away, but that distance right there in orange needs to be the same as that distance. What's the vertical distance right there? is five, so we got four to the <laughs> axis plus one more, so we got a five. What the heck? So that's a five. Now, <clears throat> if we measure the other one, if I draw a triangle, that's a, th that's a four, three, five triangle right there, or a three, four, five in the other order. So we'll have both those distances are five right there. So there is our parabola. And that's a last parabola problem we're going to do. And we're going to move into ellipses now. start just like before with a definition. Did I not spell ellipses right? Is it not pluralized like that? They're not letting me edit it. Oh well. Oh, 
Maybe just underline to annoy me. All right. Then I don't know why it's underlined. Oh well, no worries. The set of all points. So it starts out just like a parabola. Uh, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points called foci is constant. The sum of whose distances from two fixed points called, so these are both called the focus, so the plural of focus is foci. is constant. So you can think of the sum of these distances is basically the radius. Uh, and there's one uh, degenerate case. And that's when the two foci are the same point. And when this happens, you go to circle. So we're going to look at the non-degenerate case, meaning the foci are two different points. Say these are our two foci. The shape that this ellipse will have is basically an oval. It's going to be shaped pretty much like that. Oh, that's a really good ellipse. So the idea is that any point on the ellipse, if you add up, it's not to say that these are the same, but if you add up the distances, you'll always have get the same value. So instead of just using A as our constant, we're going to use 2A as the constant. It makes the other math work out a little nicer. And we'll give these points names. We'll call it uh, F1 and F2 for focus 1 and the second focus. And of course, the point on our ellipse will just be x, y. And we'll call this point P. So if I write the formula out, it's the distance of F1 to P plus the distance F2 to P equals some constant, which I will call 2A. So let's go ahead and write out what these actually are. So we need names for the coordinates of the foci. So let's <coughs> take an easy case where the foci are on the x-axis. So let's pretend that these are right on the x-axis and we're centered on the y-axis. So one foci will be C0, the other one will be negative C0. So the math gets a lot uglier if your foci are not on the x-axis or on the y-axis. So if they're just two points not on an axis, then the algebra is a lot uglier. So let's write down these distance formulas here. 
So F1 is negative C0 to the point XY plus a distance. The other point is C0 to XY. I'm supposed to equal 2A. So this distance is square root <coughs> X uh, plus C squared plus Y squared plus X minus C squared plus Y squared equals 2A. So this has two square roots in it. I want to have no square roots, and there is a way to eliminate square roots. It's going to be a bit of a pain. So what we're going to do is isolate one radical at a time. If I just square it like this, if I square both sides like this, I will have my inside-outside terms will still be square roots. So if I just square it like this, I'll have to FOIL. And then my inside-outside terms will still be square roots. So we're going to isolate one radical. And now we'll square both sides. It'll make the left side very nice, cancels the square root. Now the right side I have to FOIL, 2a squared, that's 4 times a squared, minus, there will be an inside-outside term, so we'll get two of these, so that's 4a times square root x minus c squared plus y squared, and then the <coughs> negative square root squared is positive x minus c squared plus y squared. So I know there's a lot of algebra at one time. I just foiled out the right side. So there's the first term squared, the last term squared, and then my outside inside terms are what's not underlined. All right, from here, we're going to reduce everything we can. There's a y squared on both sides. So that's going to cancel out. We're going to, again, isolate the square root. So I will subtract x minus c squared. And then let's get everything else out of there. 4a squared equals negative 4a square root x minus c squared plus y squared. So I want to reduce the left side as much as I can before I square. If I square right now, there's three terms on the left side, and that's going to be a huge pain to square trinomials. So. Let's reduce this as much as we can. Uh, I'm going to try something strange. I'm going to factor this right here. What we're looking at is the difference of squares. Square term minus another square term. And how do difference of squares factor? If you had a squared minus b squared. So we've seen it before. It goes a minus b times a plus b. So this is going to factor just like that. You just have x plus c minus x minus c times x plus c plus x minus c. You can FOIL them out and then reduce terms like that, but I'm going a slightly different route. Not the way you'd probably normally go. All right, so what cancels out? We got x minus x. That cancels c plus c. That gives us 2c 
The second term, x plus x, that's 2x, and the c's cancel. So we have 4cx minus 4a squared equals the square root negative 4a square root x minus c squared plus y squared. Let's multiply by negative 1 fourth, get that 4 out, or positive 1 fourth, it doesn't matter. We'll do positive 1 fourth. Cx minus a squared equals a square root x minus c squared plus y squared. Now we're going to, uh oh, yeah, negative a. So we'll square both sides now. So left side a half to foil, c squared x squared. The inside outside terms, I have minus a squared cx minus a squared cx. It's minus 2 a squared cx plus negative a squared is, or negative a squared squared is positive a to the fourth. Negative a squared is just a squared, and then that square root goes away. form am I trying to turn this into? We could just do algebra for doing algebra's sake, but we should have some type of end goal. I want to have a term that's an x squared term, a y squared term, and a constant term. So we'll distribute on the right side. So we'll foil this out. x squared minus 2xc plus c squared plus y squared. I'm trying to write these alphabetically. So we have ax squared minus 2a squared xc plus a squared c squared plus a squared y squared. And then copy down the left side. Does anything cancel? Looks like the a squared negative 2 a squared cx cancels out. Anything else? Doesn't look like it. So we'll go x's and y's on one side and then constants on the other. c squared x squared and the other x term is minus a squared x squared. That's all the x terms. y terms, we have a minus a squared y squared. I think there should be another. Uh oh. I think there should be another y term somewhere. Maybe not. Nope, I think we're okay. All right, so constant term minus a to the fourth plus a squared c squared. All right, and we're just going to factor out. <clears throat> the x squared, the c squared, x squared minus, no, factor out x squared. c squared minus a squared minus a squared y squared equals, we could factor an a squared out over here. So we got c squared minus a squared. I'm skipping a lot of steps because there's a, 
a whole lot of algebra we're doing. I don't want to spend 25 minutes on one problem. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. And what I'm going to do to these terms is reverse the order. So I'm going to write them as uh, a squared minus c squared. That changes the sign. Uh, multiplying the a, negative a squared y squared turns into positive a squared y squared. Okay, so this is a ellipse with foci. Negative c0 and positive c0. Which one? On um, in this term? Yeah. So I So I multiply by negative one, which basically turns it flips the signs around. Mm -hmm. And then I just wrote it in the other order. And I did that for both of the for this term and this term. All right, so we're going to make this less ugly, very slowly. So we need A to be bigger than C. So <clears throat> I'm going to scroll back up and see why we need A to be greater than C. Actually, we can just redraw the foci right here. All right, so remember the distance was 2A, sum of the distances. Is 2A. So if the sum of the distances is 2a and a equals c, there's only one point whose sum of the distances is 2c. And that one single point is the one right between the two. Because if you look how far does it take to go over here is c. This distance is also c. So there's only one point whose sum is 2c. So if the sum has to be, the smallest it could ever be is 2c. And if the sum is 2c, your ellipse is really boring. It's a single point. So that's why we're going to assume that a is greater than c. If a is ever less than c, there's no point that's going to be that sum of distances between these two. So that's why we have a is going to have to be greater than c, or else your ellipse is one single point. All right, so we need a to be greater than c. And that means that these are both positives, so that means a squared is greater than c squared. So a squared minus c squared is greater than 0. And we're going to let b equal this a squared minus c squared, which of course is greater than 0. And now we're going to sub that in up here, everywhere you see a squared minus c squared. So it gives us x squared, b squared, plus 
plus a squared y squared equals a squared b squared. And then the last step to make this look like a regular ellipse that you may be used to is multiply by 1 over b squared. No. 1 over a squared b squared. Yes. So this gives us x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And you can rewrite it as x over a whole thing squared plus y over b whole thing squared equals 1. So that should look a little bit familiar. That's the regular ellipse um, equation that you may have seen before. Write out some vocabulary of the major vertices. Our negative a zero and positive a zero, the minor vertices are zero negative b and zero positive b. And the foci, just like before, the foci are going to be C0 and negative C0. And the way you can get C from B is C is the absolute value of A squared minus B squared. So this is going to be A ellipse that's going to be wider than it is tall. So it'll be a wide ellipse like this. You have your foci, major and minor vertices, F1, F2. So this major vertice is A0. The other one is negative A0. The minor vertex is the top and bottom. 0b and 0 negative b. So we get this situation when, let's see, when a is greater than b. So there's our first row and then our second row is going to be similar. So we're going to get a tall, narrow ellipse. The foci will be spaced out like this. We have major vertex and minor vertex switch places. They still have the same labels though. So the ones on the x-axis are a0 and negative a0. Y-axis are 0b uh, and 0 negative b. The foci are what change. So the foci are now going to be 0 minus c and 0 plus c. And the good news is C is still A squared minus B squared. The way that you know you have a tall ellipse is when A is less than B. So the way you tell is you have to know if A or B is bigger. That determines what ellipse you have. So this is probably a good place to stop before we do any more problems.